Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Unboxing and Stuff. Today we're going to be taking a look at the DK Sonic DK600S Ultrasonic Cleaner. Special thanks to DK Sonic for sending this out for the channel to review. So let's go ahead and get this thing out of the box and see what we have. All right, the first thing we have is a power cord. We then have our user manual. And then here we have the unit itself, which is packaged pretty nicely with some really heavy foam to keep it from getting damaged in shipping. It looks like we have our lid. And inside we have our basket. And I'll just tip it over so you guys can see the inside real quick. All right, so let's go ahead and go over some of the features on this unit and uh, then we'll talk about some of the specs. Okay, here we are looking at the front of the machine and I went ahead and turned the power on so you could kind of see how this thing actually functions. Uh, you'll notice over here on the temperature, it's showing the ambient temperature at the current moment right now when we're not pressing any of the buttons. Over here, we actually have our temperature adjustment. You press the arrow, it'll adjust up by one. If you press it and hold for a longer period, it'll start jumping by tens. So you can get to the temperature you desire much quicker. So then we have our heat button, which you press the heat button to actually turn on the heating element and then press it again to turn it off. And then we have the same functions for the next three to be the semi-wave function which actually runs at 28 kilohertz. You press that once and it'll turn on as the timer will start to go down from whatever you have it set to. We also have the full wave, which is running at 40 kilohertz. And then we have the degas function, which actually helps to remove the bubbles and which would be kind of dead space when using an ultrasonic cleaner so that it can clean more efficiently, which actually pulses between different waves. And then we have our timer, which functions the same as our temperature. You press it up once, and it's going to go up by one minute at a time. If you press and hold, it'll go up by 10 minutes at a time. Now, keep in mind that the maximum recommended run time for this unit at any one given time without giving it a little rest, as far on the ultrasonic side, is 60 minutes. Okay, moving on to the right side of the unit, you'll notice we have some plastic handles for easy carrying. We also have a half inch ball valve, which you can open up to drain out the tank whenever you're done utilizing the water. If you're using it and making it dirty, you can freshen it up by get it out of here. And it also has a little protective plastic container, keep the threads protected in case you wanted to actually install something onto here. And then in the bottom, we also have a vent. Okay, moving on to the back of the unit, you'll notice we have two vents up top. We also have a power switch, our 120 plug power, and then also a small sticker with all the information for the machine on it. And looking on the left side of the unit, you'll notice another carry handle and a small vent on the bottom. And here on the bottom, we have a plastic fan and another vent. And we also have these soft rubber feet that will help reduce the noise and also keep it up off of the surface it's on in case any water spills, it won't get into the electronics. Okay, let's go over some of this unit's specifications and dimensions. So this unit is made of a stainless steel tank. It is capable of running up to 80 degrees Celsius. It can go for up to 99 minutes at one time. The full wave is 40 kilohertz for more intensive rinse, and the semi-wave is 28 kilohertz for a gross rinse. The heat will help with de-waxing and degreasing. You can use the degas mode for a better cleaning by eliminating small bubble pockets. So this machine is capable of holding six liters. It has approximately 180 watts of ultrasonic power and 300 watts of heating power. The dimensions of this unit are, the tank is 11 and three quarters inches long by six inches wide and six inches deep. The actual overall unit size is 12 and one quarter inches long, six and five sixteenths inches wide, and 12 and three eighths inches high. Okay, for our first test, what we're gonna go ahead and do is fill the unit with water.
Okay, and let me go grab one more jug of water so we can get it all the way up to the fill line here. Okay, now we're gonna fill in the rest of the water. Perfect. So now that we're right at the fill line, what we're gonna go ahead and do is our first test is we're going to power the unit on. We are going to set the temperature for 50 degrees Celsius. Right now it is 1.59 p.m. I'm gonna go ahead and press the heat button to turn on the heat. And we're gonna see approximately how long it takes us to get all the way up to the 50 degrees Celsius. So I'm gonna bring you back in a little while and we'll take a look. All right, everybody, so it is 2.56 at the moment. So that means that it took 57 minutes to go from a cold tap water all the way up to 50 degrees Celsius. So that concludes this test. And now for our next test, we're gonna be taking some dirty, grimy parts and we're gonna be placing them inside of a mason jar with a cleaning mixture. And we're gonna run them inside the ultrasonic cleaner and see how it does. So let me get set up for that and I'll show you what we're gonna start cleaning. Okay, so for our big test here, what we're gonna do is we're going to actually clean these five items. I have two sockets, a pair of dikes, a large bolt, and an adapter for a ratchet. And so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and actually place the, each two of these items in the small jar and then the three items in the big jar, which I'm going to fill up one, it will be this one here, I'll fill up with a mixture of 50% simple green and 50% hot water. So I'm gonna go ahead and preheat that with the hot water. And then I'm gonna do this one is gonna be 50% uh, the simple green HD and then 50% hot water as well. And I went ahead and already removed some water from inside the tank, so that way it doesn't overflow when I put these jars in there. Uh, this is a way around getting your tank really dirty and messy is by actually using a glass jar. Uh, the actual vibrations of the ultrasonic will go right through the glass, no problem, and clean these inside, keeping your tank nice and fresh. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these loaded up and then I'll bring you here and we'll get these things put inside. Okay, so here we are. I got this jar with the grimy bolt and the adapter all loaded in there with the Simple Green HD. And as you can see, it's already kind of starting to take off some of that grease and nastiness. And then I got the other two sockets and the pair of dikes in the regular Simple Green mixture. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the lid off here and I'm gonna place this mixture in here on its side. And then I'm gonna have to pull out just a hair more water. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and place in this other mixture here. And as you can see there, that brings us right up to the full line. And so I'm gonna go ahead, scoot this forward just a little bit. So you can kind of see in here. And then I'm just gonna start this up and I'm actually gonna go ahead and run it on the full wave for the full 60 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn that on. And you can see that it starts to buzz and some of the bubbles start to come up. Now I don't know if you'll be able to hear me talking this audio or not, but our timer's running down. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for the full hour and come back and we'll take a look at our parts and see how they do. Okay, so this thing is finished and it's still nice piping hot. So what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna go ahead and grab some pliers and I'm gonna pull the basket out so we can let everything kind of cool down. All right. All right, I'm gonna lower this down and as you can see, the, the bright green fluid is no longer bright green, which was this guy here. 
you can't even really see through it. And then the purple fluid is just like a dark brown color. You can barely see through that as well. So I'm gonna let these things cool down and then we'll come pull these parts out and uh, take a closer look at them. Okay, so I've let these things cool down a little bit. They're still warm, but they're not hot. So let's go ahead and get into this small one here first. This one was pretty full when I closed it up. Just got some pliers here to help me pull things out. All right, so let's set this jar aside. Dry this off real quick. So as you can see here, the bolt is a little bit dirty still, but it is way, way cleaner. There's still a little bit of gunk in here, but most of this thing is actually very clean. Um, the top was pressed against the lid, so that may not have got as much cleaning as it should have. Uh, but this is really, really clean, and it even knocked off some of this loose old paint that was on there. Um, you hit this thing with a wire brush and rinse it off, and it'd be ready to to get used again and however you wanted to use in your project. And let's take a look at this guy. Um, as you can see on the outside, it's obviously way cleaner. It was covered in grime before. Um, still a little rough. On the inside, I uh, use a little, would use maybe a little uh, wire brush to just touch that up. And then most of the coloring that you're seeing on here is uh, just a light rusting. And obviously this wasn't made to take rust off, it was just made to take off the grease and grime. So I'd say that did a really good job as well. So let's go ahead and break into this other jar here. Okay, so let me just wipe that down. So the metal on this is really, really good. I'm really impressed with that. Um, that looks great. Uh, the handles, I wasn't sure how well the, they would clean off. Uh, they definitely look a little bit better, but they're still kind of grimy and gross. But let's see if I... Yeah, so I'm not too surprised about that. But as far as the actual head of these pliers, like they or these dikes, they look really good. Uh, so I'm quite impressed with that. Let's go for our next thing here. This looks really good as well. It cleaned this up significantly. Um, the inside's still a little bit greasy, grimy. Uh, you know, you could clean that up with a, uh, a brush of some type but it looks like it's probably loosened up all the grime and stuff in there. But as far as the outside goes, like this is, this is really nice. Clean it up very well. And then let's get our final test subject out of here. And dry it off real quick. And this looks fantastic compared to what it looked like before. I mean, it's on the outside, with the exception of the little bits of rust, it looks practically brand new. Um, inside, good overall. Could use a light touch up with a brush or something like that. Um, but yeah, so if you take a look at all our parts here, they really cleaned up nicely. Uh, I think at this point, the only thing that really needs to be done is rinsed off and be rinsed off, cleaned up with a brush and some of these maybe some like a light coat of oil or something like that just to keep them from further rusting. But uh, I have to say I'm pretty impressed. You know, this is, this is pretty good for, for a single run. And I'm actually gonna throw the lid back on here Try and show you at the bottom 
hopefully that comes across on the camera pretty good, but it is just like brown. It's you can just see the dust and there or the dirt and debris in there. Just everywhere. And then it's pretty much settled, but you can see it kind of darkens up a little bit if you shake it. And then let's take another quick look at this one over here. Same thing, dirt, debris, some of the leftover paint off of that bolt. And if you shake it up, it just gets even gunkier. Um, I do think that if you let this sit and everything settle for a while, uh, one of the nice things I feel like is you could probably pour off the top 90% of it into another jar and reuse a lot of this cleaner once, uh, once it's settled for a couple days. Uh, same thing with this, like even after about an hour, this settled down significantly. Uh, and I feel like you could probably use it to clean multiple things or even continue cleaning some of these other items. So quickly, I'm just going to show you a pass of what the parts looked like before they were cleaned. So you can see how dirty and grimy they were. And then here is a pass of the parts now that they are cleaned and fresh and what they actually look like now. Okay, so I went ahead and took all these items and just give them a quick rinse under some warm water and used a toothbrush to just lightly scrub them up. And that really knocked out most of that interior uh, gunk that I was seeing in these. And they actually look very clean now. Um, I have to say overall, I'm very impressed with how well that this worked. Uh, the amount of effort on my part in getting all these things clean was very minimal. And once you have this thing actually set up and just ready to go, it, it just gets even easier for you. So uh, it's definitely a nice tool as I can just get this thing going and run off and start working on another project or something like that and not have to spend the time to actually clean them up. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's not going to get off stuff like rust and <clears throat> anything that's extremely stuck on there on the, you know, a single pass anyways. Uh, the, the rust, mainly because that's not the type of fluid that I put in there, was not something to fight or kill rust. It's just to get off the grease and grime. Um, I have seen people use that type of stuff in these cleaners with success as well. Uh, that's just not what we did today. Uh, but this seems to be like a very good quality machine overall. Uh, it's got a lot of features that some of the other machines on Amazon in this price range don't have. Uh, and overall, I think that this is a pretty good value and it's a pretty solid machine. So if you're actually looking for something like this uh, and this approximate price range, this is definitely a good option. Uh, all the other reviews I've seen on these as well have uh, stated that they've even tested against other competing products in the same price range, the same size. And uh, the DK Sonic is actually one of the top performers before the price goes up into the you know thousands of dollars. So I look forward to testing out this uh, machine a little bit more in the future. A, I may even do a video testing out different cleaning solutions and showing even more things that you can clean with this. Uh, but for now, I think that you get the general idea of this product and uh, I definitely would give it a thumbs up and say, if you're looking for something like this, you know, this definitely a good company to look at. They're a little bit more expensive than the bottom end, but you get a lot more. You know, this has three transducers in it which really make a big difference as far as the agitation that happens in the water. So if you guys want to check these guys out, I'm going to leave a link to this particular unit down below. Keep in mind, they do have many different sizes. Uh, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, another thing I wanted to mention was that the water, you know, it took just shy of an hour to heat up to the 50 degrees Celsius. However, uh, something that I'd like to say is in the future, if I'm actually going to pull this out and use it, I'm going to pour hot water from my sink into this machine and into my jars. And that'll cut the heating time down to practically nothing because uh, it's going to be probably even hotter than I need it once I pour it in here. So that'd save you a lot of time on that front and you'd be able to just get right to using it. So I think the only other thing that I really wanted to mention is that I think if you think you need a certain size, probably just go a little bit bigger than that. Uh, this is gonna be good for 
a ton of different smaller things. However, if I wanted to do like a full size carburetor or something like that on a, a vehicle, it's probably a touch small for that. So I would recommend just going a little bigger than you anticipate that you need and then really pay attention to that actual tank size on the inside. So you can kind of measure and set up and see, you know, is your part gonna actually fit into there? But uh, I think these are really neat and that this one is particularly small. So, you know, it'd be easy to store somewhere in the shop out of the way when I'm not planning on using it. So I think that about wraps it up for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions about the DK Sonic, uh, give, it, give me a shout and we'll definitely answer any of those. Uh, I may even look into reviewing some of the larger uh, versions of these and see, you know, what can I actually fit inside of uh, the different size tanks. So we'll look into that in the future. But for now, I just want to say, hey, thanks for watching the video, guys, and we'll catch you on the next one.